Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, I am giving you a thrift to treasure, but not any thrift to treasure. Oh no, I am using the new IOD transfer called Holly Glenn from the winter release. I am so excited and feel so blessed that the IOD sisters sent the products to me early so I was able to create and oh my gosh, you guys, this release is absolutely amazing. So I cannot wait to hear what you guys think at the end of the video. So Here she is, guys, Holly Glenn. And let me tell you, this one definitely caught my eye the moment I opened up the package. It was filled with so much goodness uh, from the beautiful birds, the foliage, all the animal life. Honestly, this could be used for the holidays, but also non-holiday as well. I was simply amazed at all the beautiful detail and there is so much potential and so many amazing images in this one. So immediately I knew that this is what I was going to create with today. For project one, we are going to create some ornaments. Last year while I was up uh, at our cabin in northern Wisconsin, I did go out in the woods and grab some logs so that I could make my own ornaments and I had a few left over. I cut them right around an inch thick. I painted half of them with a black circle and the other half with a white. Now if you don't have the ability or um, the means to find wood like this, you can definitely pick this up or these little rounds up at your local craft store. I've definitely seen them there and you can replicate this entire project. So now I'm looking through the transfer book and what I'm looking for are images without an actual solid background and that way the bit of the black will peep through and the bit of the white will peep through. I'm starting with the white and I'm basically taking my transfer figuring out where I want to lay it and then pulling off that backing and laying it down. I want to allow enough room on top that I can drill a hole for my string. So I just tried to take into account which images I put on which rounds. Uh, some of the rounds were just slightly bigger or um, you know differently shaped. So that's something that you'll want to look at as you're applying your transfers as well. And after you lay it down, I just started rubbing. If you haven't used a transfer before, they are so easy. You pull off that back sheet, lay it down, and use your transfer stick and just start rubbing. And after you apply it, you take that backing and you rub it to really burnish that image into your uh, whatever um, piece that you're applying your transfer to. And then what I did is I went from um, one round and did it on each of those. And I think by far, you guys, uh, this little raccoon is definitely my favorite. After I finished applying all of the images to the white, I then proceeded to apply them to the black. And what you're going to notice right away is that it looks completely different. The white, the images really, really pop. And then on the black, they're just a bit more subdued. So this is a really great way for you to see what you like better, whether you like a white background or a dark background for a project like this. So if you were gonna try to replicate it, at least you know the difference. When you apply a transfer, you will want to seal it. I am using DIY's Big Top and I am applying just a nice even coat to all the ornaments to seal them. Now, after I did this, I did let them dry very thoroughly brought them all outside, and this is what I did not capture on video, but want to let you know I took a drill bit and I just drilled a hole directly above all the images and then strung um, just a piece of twine through it. And I just think because uh, the twine made it look very rustic. And then this project is complete. And one thing I really love about this transfer 
is you can just very easily apply it to an ornament like this or as you're going to see in the next project you can be get a little bit more elaborate For project two, I had thrifted these three frames and my initial vision for these was completely different than what you're going to see today. Uh, as you can see, I started painting two of them white and that is as far as my vision went and they got set aside. Now today, here is what my vision is. I have these three wood blocks and you guys, I am a wood hoarder because if I have any scrap wood, I always keep it because there's so much you can do with it. Now I'm taking those and then I'm also using the paper called Blue Tartan from Roycycle Decoupage Paper. And then we're gonna pick out some really beautiful images from the new transfer book. For starters, what we're going to do is the white is definitely too bright for this transfer. I am taking Little Black Dress from DIY Paint. I'm going to apply two even coats of Little Black Dress to all three frames. Before I paint that third frame, because it is brown, I did go ahead and paint it white and then paint it black. I am, my vision here is I want to distress these back and look, make them look a bit rustic. And I figured that one would look completely different than these two if I distress them back and there's no white underneath. So I applied um, all three coats to that third frame as well. For starters, I took those little blocks and I took my hand sander and I smoothed off the edges. I didn't want it to be really brunt. I wanted to have a really nice smooth edge. And now I'm in the transfer book and I'm picking out three images to put onto these little blocks. One of the first images that caught my eye was this little fox. I for sure am using him. I also am slightly obsessed with birds, so I had to add a bird to this as well. And then another image that caught my eye was a bear. So I'm going to use these three images in these picture frames. I want to paint the background a similar color that is in the actual transfer. I am using Sandy Blonde from DIY and it is almost a perfect match. I'm applying a nice even coat to all three, letting them dry very thoroughly and then we're going to come back and apply the transfers. While those are drying, I go outside, I take my hand sander, and I am going to distress these frames. I want a bit of that wood grain to come through. I want a little bit of the white, and that is exactly what I did or I accomplished here. So now I did that to all three of the frames. I am sealing them. Anytime you use DIY paint, you do need to seal it. Otherwise, it can be reactivated. So I'm applying an even coat of Big Top to the frame. I'm going to set these aside, let those dry, and then we're going to continue on with the project. Here's just a little glimpse of my vision so far. I want the black frame. I want that little block in the center. It's going to be a raised image. Let's start applying our transfers to the little blocks. And again, these are so easy to apply. And I love how the sandy blonde and the image itself look so similar. I like how there's a little bit of a contrast, but it, they just, it really blends as well. Now it's time to seal them. 
Again, anytime you use a transfer, you want to seal your transfer, but I also used DIY paint, so I definitely want to seal that as well. I'm applying one even coat of DIY's Big Top. We're going to let this dry, and now let's tackle the decoupage. I had some scrap wood laying around and what I did is I cut a piece that fit the back of the frame and I did that for all three frames. From here, what I am going to do anytime you use decoupage paper, it is highly recommended that you start with a white surface. So from here, what I'm going to do is I am using a white swan from DIY and I am going to apply two even coats coats of white swan to the scrap wood. My favorite decoupage medium is liquid patina, so I had to get that out right away. Here is the blue tartan paper from Roy Cycled, and the one thing that I do want to say is make sure that your lines are vertical and they're up and down straight. Uh, when you put your frame on, you don't want your lines to be wonky and not be totally vertical or straight up and down. Uh, what I did is I just creased the paper a little bit so I knew where to cut. And I always leave a little bit of an overhang when I apply decoupage paper, just in case there's a little bit of movement. Uh, that way you have a little wiggle room. Again, I am going to look to make sure it looks good. I love how the image pops off that blue paper and it's time to start uh, applying the paper. Again, I make sure that everything is even. I pull the paper back and I am going to apply a starter strip of the liquid patina. And this is going to make sure that when I lay my paper down, it alleviates a lot of wrinkles and it keeps everything in place. And what I do is I lay down, like I said, a nice even layer of liquid patina, push my paper back, take that brush and just start working out all of the wrinkles and any air bubbles that were in there. I work that all out. I then pull the paper back and I start another strip of the liquid patina. I work my way down and this really makes the paper go on nice and smooth. Now that it's dry, I am going to get rid of that excess paper that I talked about in the beginning. I'm taking a piece of sandpaper and in a downward motion, I am just rubbing on it and the paper just comes right off and you get a nice crisp clean edge. Here I have the project laid out. I'm liking it guys, but I felt like something was missing from the frame. So I took Golden Rule from DIY Paint. It's a gilding wax and I am going to just add a strip of the gilding wax, kind of fit that wax brush right in there and just add that little strip of gold. And I think that ties the, it all together. I think it really brings out that center image and it's exactly what this project needed. From there, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to attach the back with my brad nailer and then from the back as well, attach that block through the back. And what I did is I just held the block in place, flipped it over and applied five brad nails into the block so that it stayed in place. And that is a finished project.
for project three, I recently found this while I was out thrifting. And I know many of you probably think, oh my gosh, it is a pile of junk. That is not what I saw when I found this little container. I thought I had struck gold. So I grabbed it and honestly, I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do with it. But then when I saw that big image of that deer, I knew that this was going to house that beautiful image. And on a curved or rounded surface, I always like to start in the middle while I'm rubbing and then I work all the way to one side and then vice versa and it goes on very easy and once i um, i can see that it's coming off of the actual transfer backing i just grab one of the edges and i just start working my way around again i love this transfer set because very easily you can just add an image to something like this like a container and it completely transforms it or you can do other elaborate projects with it now i was not finished with this little container i loved it the way it was but i felt like it needed a pop of color Yep, it needs a bit of red. So I am using Marquee from DIY Paint and I am going to just hand paint a little strip of red around the top. And I only applied one coat. I felt like it was too clean looking. I mean, look at the rest of the container. It looks a bit rough and that red stripe looks a little fresh. So I decided I was going to do a bit of wet distressing to it just to make it look a little aged. If you haven't wet distressed before, it is super easy. Just take a damp rag and just randomly rub here and there. And just what it does is it gives you a little bit more control of your distressing versus using a hand sander or sandpaper. And that's what I did. I just kind of went all the way around. I wanted it to look grungy and old, just like the rest of the container but I wanted that red in there to make the berries pop out of the red berries of the image. Lastly, to finish this project up, I just need to seal my transfer and the paint, and it is always a really good idea to seal a container like this if there's any rust on it. That way you won't, it won't be flaking if you decide to use this decor piece in your home. For project four, I thrifted these three silver teapots on three different missions and everything is better in threes. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to transform all three of the teapots. We are going to start off by using Sandy Blonde and paint all three of them two even coats of Sandy Blonde. I have been slightly obsessed with frames lately, as you could see from the previous project. I decided to break out the molds called Frames 1 and Frames 2 and apply a frame to each one of the fronts of the teapots. And for starters, what I always recommend is using cornstarch in your molds. That way the actual clay pops out of them a whole lot easier. Now that I picked my three frames that I'm going to use, 
I am taking IOD's air dry clay and I am going to start putting it into the first frame. And what I do is I always try to work it out with my hands, start um, getting it almost to fit the actual image that you're going to put, you know, have it mold and then just press the clay in it and work my way all the way around. And then I use my thumb and I get rid of any of the excess clay. I always keep my clay in a plastic bag because it dries out very quickly. Now I'm gonna use gravity to help me and tip it over and the frame comes right out. And I did that for all three frames. Now this frame, it has an opening and I am going to apply the transfer first. So what I have decided to do here is take Sandy Blonde and I am going to just paint the inside of the frame. Let that dry while I apply the transfer. I figured out where the transfer was going to lay on the front of this teapot and I knew exactly where I needed to lay the transfer. And again, I because of the rounded surface, I just start on one, like kind of in the center and then on the one edge and I just start working my way around is on I'm taking that backing and I'm burnishing the transfer really just rubbing it just to really make sure that it's embedded into my project I am using tight bond the paint on the inside of that frame is dry and I flip the frame over and I'm applying just a nice even layer of tight bond to the back side. The key here is you want a nice even layer. You don't want an excessive amount. When you lay it down and you, um, what I always recommend when I lay my mold down, I just lightly put pressure on it to make sure it has a good adhesion. You don't want a lot of glue oozing out. It just creates a lot of excess cleanup for you. And if that glue would dry, it yeah, it just creates a mess. So again, what I recommend is just a nice even layer and then apply it. Once it's applied, again, I just like I said, I like to just make sure I go around on all the edges, make sure that it's completely down because once it dries and it's in place, if there's any gaps or openings, you cannot move the air dry clay because it will be dry. When I let this dry, I don't stand it upright. I actually leave it laying on its back. That way the mold doesn't have a tendency to slide down. It stays right in place. And I do the exact same process for all three teapots. Now here you can see I actually applied the mold upside down. You can remove the molds before it dries. You just want to be a, make sure you're a little careful when you do that. And again, go around the entire perimeter of the mold and make sure it's all the way down. For the third mold, I just want to point out this one is a little bit more chunkier and you want to make sure they get a really nice good adhesion on this one. Uh, so I do recommend just starting in the center, make sure it's completely down from there and then go around all the edges. And what I did on this one is I actually went back a secondary time and a couple of the areas had raised a little bit and I just re you know, I touched it up just to make sure that it was completely down. After the glue had set up a bit, I did go back and I applied Sandy Blonde to all three frames and then I let these dry overnight. Here's what they look like the next day. This one is almost done. There's just a couple more steps, but for these two, we do need to apply a transfer in the center of each of these beautiful frames. So let's go in and take a peek. Right away, I knew that I wanted to go with a bird theme and I started pulling out different images and I saw the bluebird. I thought that one was gonna be perfect. I also wanted to make sure that I could get the bird in the entire frame so the bird had to be in the perfect position on the transfer. 
this one was pretty darn perfect so I laid it down and I started rubbing and I used my finger initially but then I grabbed the transfer stick and I started rubbing with that and the key here is I didn't want the whole transfer to be all over the frame I wanted to try to just get it on the inside as best as I could and what happened was some of it came off uh, and some of it stuck a little bit and then I used my little exacto knife to just cut around and peel off the excess transfer this one I'm going to do the exact same thing except I am going to chop off the excess uh, right away before I lay it down. The other one is a little bit more difficult because it was oval and I didn't want to over cut on the oval. This one being square, it was a little easier to gauge where I needed to make those cuts. And so I just rubbed it just like I did on the other one. And I used my X-Acto knife and got rid of all that excess, which there was only very little. And I am already loving how these are turning out, guys. I do want to bring back a bit of the detail. So I am taking a damp cloth and I am going to wet distress all three of these. And again, it's very easy to wet distress. You just uh, put a little pressure in an area and rub. And with DIY paint, it's so easy to do this. So there is so much beautiful detail on all three of these teapots that I wanted to bring those details out. Now that they're dry again, after the wet distressing, I am taking Big Top and I am sealing both the transfer and the entire teapot. And I am applying just one even coat of the Big Top. And again, we're going to let this dry and then come back and do the final step. I let these dry overnight and now we're going to add a bit of dark wax from DIY and this is definitely going to bring out all the details in these beautiful frames. So what I do is I'm taking my waxing brush and I'm going to apply just a little bit of wax and I start off by really getting into all the detail of the frame and around the frame and then wiping wax all over the entire teapot and then wiping it off with a napkin. I'm going to do that to all three of the teapots and again this is just such an easy and simple way to bring out all the details of your project. For our fifth and final project, it's going to be another simple one, folks. I recently thrifted this metal container, and once I saw this transfer, I knew the transfer was going to be perfect for the front of it. I just had to find the perfect one, and yep, I went with a raccoon. You guys knew how much I love that other raccoon. I decided the raccoon was going to be perfect on the front of this, and think of all the possibilities for this little hanging basket. I thought, well, I could put it in a wreath. I could use it as a shelf sitter. There's just so many ways to decorate it, and it is so stinking cute. So again, um, what I did is I applied the transfer, very easy, burnished it. I then applied a sealer, and this project was completely finished. Oh, 
What did you guys think? Absolutely amazing, right? I love this transfer and I have a lot more in store for you guys. I have been creating like crazy and there will be more videos where I am going to feature these products. So stay tuned and go ahead and get out and get those products because guess what? It is a limited edition. All of these products are limited. So once they're sold out, they're gone. Um, so I would just definitely encourage you to get out there. My website is fully stocked and I can already see that I have my favorites. So I'm sure that all of you will as well. All right, well, thanks so much and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.